What's going on, guys? It's New York Prepper here. It is Saturday, April 17th, 2021, and I have another breaking news alert to share with you guys on the situation in Ukraine. And what you're looking at here is the real-time flight path of an American reconnaissance drone currently flying over eastern Ukraine, very close to the separatist-controlled areas of Donetsk and Luhysk. And this is the RQ-4 Global Hawk. It's America's premier reconnaissance drone. Okay, they've used this thing in many, many conflicts over the last 20 years. Uh, most recently, it was shot down in 2019 by Iran over the Strait of Hormuz. So this thing has uh, seen a lot of battles. It's seen a lot of action. And the U.S. military would not be deploying an RQ-4 Global Hawk to eastern Ukraine if they really didn't have a need to, okay? Because these drones are very expensive, and every time they fly this thing, it reduces its service life, okay? It's like a car. You know, when you have a car, if you take a long trip and you drive all the way to uh, Florida, you know, if you're in, in New York and you drive down to Florida and then come back, you know, you're putting on over 2,000 miles on your car and you're reducing the life of your car. So the same thing happens with planes and these drones are worth millions of dollars. This is a fully unmanned drone. There's no pilot inside. And uh, every time they fly these things, it reduces its service life and it costs money to deploy. So the military wouldn't be deploying it unless they felt a real need to do so. And so this drone here has been flying over eastern Ukraine, as I mentioned. It's a re this is a real-time flight path, so you can see the plane moving here. It's heading south again, back down towards the Sea of Azov. But I find it very interesting that the uh, American military has deployed an RQ-4 Global Hawk to eastern Ukraine. Specifically, they flew right up next to Donetsk. They flew right up next to Luhysk. They flew over Slavyansk which is uh, a battleground city. It was a battleground city uh, during the 2015-2014 uh, Ukraine uh, situation. Okay, Slavyansk was a battleground city that the Ukrainian military and the uh, Russian separatists in eastern Ukraine were fighting over, and they were fighting over Slavyansk, okay? And, and so the Americans flew this drone right over Slavyansk, uh, just, just about an hour ago. I've been tracking this for the last hour or so. And they flew right over it. And then they flew within 10 miles of the Russian border here. Okay, and this is in eastern Ukraine, far eastern Ukraine. You can see Luhansk over here. Um, so they flew within 10 miles of the Russian border. Okay, they did a loop here, flew within 10 miles, turned around, came back. And then they went up north and they flew up north and they did a loop to the north and then came back again. And so uh, that's very interesting to me. And again, it's flying right outside of the Donetsk People's Republic here. OK, so this this U, uh, RQ-4 Global Hawk is gathering intel on these two areas here in Luhansk and Donetsk, which are the Russian separatist areas. And they're also flying up here towards the Russian border to see if there's any Russian military uh, equipment here. Okay, so uh, it also flew right near Crimea and Georgia, and it also flew right by the Kerch Straits. Okay, and you can see now it's heading south towards Berdyansk, which is right on the Sea of Azov. And I find it interesting that it's flying right near the Sea of Azov here. And do, it did a loop over here earlier, as you can see this little loop. And I think the reason why it did that loop is it was trying to gather intel on the Russian warships that are in the Sea of Azov that are blockading uh, Ukraine. Okay, if you guys don't remember, uh, two days ago, there was some breaking news that Russia was blockading the Sea of Azov. They closed off the Kerch Strait over here. And they're blockading the Sea of Azov so no ships can get in. And that basically isolates Mariupol and all these cities on the Sea of Azov 
from any kind of uh, reinforcement through the through naval uh, vessels, or also, I believe, possibly commercial ships are being blockaded as well. So it flew right into this key area here, right by the Sea of Azov, where uh, the Russian ships were supposed to be stationed at, probably gathering information on what type of ships are there, um, gathering intel. Now, this plane can do a few different things. I want to just quickly share what it can do. So first and foremost, it can take pictures, of both visible and infrared. Okay, so it can take regular standard pictures like you would take on your cell phone, but they can zoom in like very, very uh, detailed pictures if they need to like zoom into a specific area where there may be a military base or they want to zoom in on a specific type of equipment to see what kind of equipment it is. If let's say there's like an air defense battery and the Americans want to know what kind of air defense battery is there. You know, they can zoom right in and see what it is. Is it a S-400? Is it, is it a S-300? You know, uh, and we did get word that Russia was deploying ice scanners to this area. So it's a good chance that they're using this drone to see what kind of missiles and tanks and equipment Russia has on the border of Ukraine. And they're probably also trying to see if there's any Russian equipment in Donetsk and Luhansk already, okay? And I think they're also flying down over here near Berdyansk because they want to see what kind of naval warships and what kind of Russian military presence is in the Sea of Azov, okay? So it can take pictures. It can take very detailed pictures. It can also take infrared pictures. Um, it can also scan with a radar, and they can use radar to detect any kind of uh, military equipment. And it can also be used to pinpoint the location of, for, of targets for the military. So uh, in the Middle Eastern wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, they use the Global Hawk to pinpoint specific targets for, for military strikes, okay, whether it was compounds of the Taliban if they were trying to gather uh, reconnaissance on the location of Osama bin Laden and other terrorists, they, they use the Global Hawk to try to figure out more detailed information, okay? Because you can't see everything by satellite. You have to fly a plane over it, all right? So this is a very serious uh, deployment here, okay? The American military would not be deploying an RQ-4 Global Hawk unless they really felt the need to. And um, again, it flew over eastern Ukraine. It flew within 10 miles of the Russian border, likely trying to get information on the Russian military positions here. Um, and it also flew by Crimea. It flew by the Kerch Strait. And it also went down into Georgia here, and it made a few loops into Georgia, which I find very interesting. Um, I don't know why it would fly into Georgia unless maybe the U.S. military thinks that Russia may invade Georgia if this war pops off. Let's say uh, Russia decides to invade Ukraine. Russia could potentially try to do a, a simultaneous invasion of multiple areas, not just Ukraine. They could invade Ukraine, Georgia, and the Baltics. You know, They could do all three of those countries at once and catch NATO off guard and do it very quickly before NATO can respond. Okay. And that's that's been Putin's biggest thing that he's always been known for is that he likes to quickly respond and take over an area and annex it before NATO has a chance to respond. So it's very possible that, you know, uh, the U.S. military has some kind of intelligence of Russian positions here in the Caucasus area. And it looks like they sent this uh, drone all the way up to the Caucasus in the height of the the highest peaks of the Caucasus mountains here. And uh, if you guys don't remember, in 2008, Georgia was invaded by Russia and they took over part of South Ossetia, which is somewhere in this region here. OK. Um, and uh, during the USSR, Georgia was a, a republic or it was part of the USSR. Okay. This is actually where Joseph Stalin was born. Okay. Stalin was born in Georgia and the Caucasus mountains are a critical piece of terrain for the Russians. Okay. Because it's 
basically a geographic barrier to the Middle East. The Caucasus are like a huge mountain uh, mountain region here. Okay, these mountains go up to like 20,000 feet. They're very tall mountains and you can't get any uh, equipment over them. Okay, they're very, very tall mountains. They're taller than the Rockies. Um, they're like as big as the, uh, the mountains in Alaska. They're very tall and you can't get any tanks and equipment over them because they're very rugged and there's, no, there's not many roads, okay? And uh, most of the year it's covered in snow and ice. So it's like a geographic barrier that protects Russia from the Middle East. So obviously Russia wants to have this back like they had during the USSR days so they can have a nice barrier here uh, to the south. And right now Russia controls half of the Caucasus and the other half is controlled by Azerbaijan and Georgia, okay? And we do know that Russia took over part of South Ossetia. So I find it interesting that the U.S. military flew into what looks like close to South Ossetia, which is the Russian-controlled area now that was, uh, I think it was annexed by Russia, and then it flew over to Tbilisi, and then it flew back. Um, I, that's very interesting, guys. And... Uh, Again, it flew by the Kerch Strait over here. It flew by Sochi. It flew by Krasnodar. This is an area where there's been a lot of Russian military buildup in the last two weeks or so. So, uh, you know, it's likely that the U.S. military is trying to gather information on the Russian military positions here, as well as the Kerch Strait and also in, um, in uh, Crimea, okay? So uh, you, can, you can track this uh, plane for yourself. All you have to do is go to Flight Radar 24 and put in Forte 10. That's the call sign. All right. When you do a you search and you type in Forte 10 and you'll be able to track it, but it's still up in the air, guys. So I'm going to monitor this drone for you and update you on this. But, uh, you know, the fact that the U.S. military is deploying a drone into eastern Ukraine is, is a very serious move. And I'll just show you more of the flight path. It, it flew all the way from Italy, it looks like. Okay, it flew from Italy. I'm going to zoom down over here and um, let's see if I can I can uh, get down here. I'm just going to do something real quick. Okay, so uh, it looks like it might have taken off from uh, Sicily, okay, and uh, flew over Greece and Bulgaria. And then it went up towards Crimea. It went down through the Kerch Strait area, down to Georgia, and then back up into eastern Ukraine, Donetsk, Luhansk, okay? And it's still in the air. Uh, I want to just read some of the specifics about the RQ-4 Global Hawk. Um, it has a range of 14,000 miles, like I said. Um, if, if you do the math, that's like flying from New York to uh, Los Angeles six times, okay? So this plane can fly from New York to Los Angeles and back again to New York, and it can make two round trips like that without having to refuel, all right? 14,000 miles, that's an absolutely insane, insane amount of, of distance that it can cover without having to refuel. It can stay up in the air for over 32 hours, so it can stay in the air for a day and a half. So guys, it's likely that this thing is going to fly a few more passes around Crimea and eastern Ukraine. So I'm going to continue to monitor it. And uh, it can also gather uh, signals intelligence. It can in intercept uh, signals, electronic signals. It can uh, get intercept radio communications. Okay, so it's a very powerful piece of equipment. All right. I'm going to read some of the specifics here. It says that uh, there's different types of RQ-4s. There's different versions. So the first version was the RQ-4A, which performed imagery intelligence with a 2,000-pound payload of a synthetic aperture radar with electro-optical and infrared sensors. Uh, several A models were delivered, uh, and all were retired by 2011. Okay, the, the RQ-4B Block 20 was the first of the B-model Global Hawks, which had a greater 3,000-pound payload, and it employed upgraded uh, synthetic aperture radar and electro-optical infrared sensors. 
Um, four Block 10s were converted into communications relay with the Battlefield Airborne Communications Node payload. Um, the RQ-4B is capable of multi-intelligence collecting with synthetic aperture radar, electro-optical and infrared sensors, along with Airborne Signals Intelligence payload, which is a wide-spectrum signals intelligence sensor. Um, it says that it's also equipped with multi-platform radar technology insertion program, actively electronically scanned array radar, which provides uh, synthetic aperture radar and moving target interdiction data for wide area surveillance of stationary and moving targets, okay? Uh, the RQ-4 is capable of conducting sorties lasting up to 30 hours long, okay? That's absolutely insane all right so that's pretty much it for this video guys i just wanted to share this with you i have i'm gonna have some more breaking updates later on today but that's pretty much it for now thanks for watching take care god bless and don't forget the four p's pray prepare practice and persevere